The science of attraction is the pursuit of the facial aesthetics industry who utilize scientific research techniques to unveil findings about what and how specific features of the human body and face interact to make someone get that gut feeling of saying he or she is attractive. Across the countless videos that Cooves has uploaded, concepts of sexual dimorphism, golden ratios, ideal side profiles, perfect hairlines, the best skincare techniques and so many many more, we've described in detail to help you understand how your facial aesthetic can be improved, helps your attraction rating, that's the end goal ideally. Yet so many research studies are in part limited by the design. As scientists, there is a common tendency to rely on well-controlled experiments in the lab, a technique that can be criticized for lacking real-life validity. As the common counter-argument to facial aesthetics research, it's not about what happens in a lab, it's about that gut feeling that makes us know if I'm attractive or not. With all of that said, it does make sense that the next pursuit in scientific research should be to get out of the lab and then see how the force of physical attraction plays out in a more realistic scenario, which is why a concept like speed dating can tell us so much more about the difficult to discover laws of attraction. For those of you unfamiliar with the concept, speed dating attempts to suppress all the awkwardness of a long movie and a dinner date by squashing it into a short, sharp session, designed to see if there are any initial flare-ups between two people meeting for the first time. You really don't need me to explain how speed dating works, I'm sure you've seen it multiple times. But on top of that, it also aims to rid the issue of picking the wrong person, as speed dating involves going on multiple short dates in one night. Put simply, speed dating is about having people meet multiple potential partners in a short period of time. Today, we're going to look at a very unique piece of attraction research from the lens of a speed dating correlational study, which is a field study where you don't really control the dependent and independent variables, but rather try to draw conclusions from existing data points from what we're seeing. So for instance, if target A chooses target B, what well, can we find out from that decision? Firstly, we're going to be looking towards an American university study acting as a methodological primer for speed dating, which comes from Finkel and colleagues' claim that speed dating is an invaluable tool for studying romantic attraction. The study outlines the methodology behind trying to utilize speed dating as a scientific procedure, recognizing the limitations of stigma on the efficacy of speed dating research, as well as the issue of speed dating drawing a biased sample pool which is not representative of the wider dating population. In other words, this study helps us set out the way for how we should be assessing speed dating research by listing the limitations and the benefits of this type of study. What's really important about this type of study are the follow-up questionnaires that have been developed in order to draw scientific findings from the participants of the research. Mind you, we don't really have a whole lot of control over the independent and dependent variables. We can't say, you uh, don't choose anybody who looks over the age of 50 and uh, has red hair, right? We can only find out what the decision-making process was through questionnaires after the event has occurred. As we can see here, concepts about dating seriously, dating casually, and the idea of friendly attraction versus sexual attraction are all covered to allow for further findings to be discovered. Now, we're going to focus our attention on another American study titled What Leads to Romantic Attraction, Similarity, Reciprocity, Security, or Beauty, which investigates the four leading principles of attraction and attempts to test each theory through a speed dating study. To uncover the secrets from this study, let's look at each of these primary principles of attraction individually. Firstly, the similarity principle is that people are attracted to others with similar features to them, as doing so has many adaptative functions, including facilitating dyadic interactions, fostering a sense of familiarity and safety, and validating an individual's self-concept and self-worth. Research from Byron and colleagues throughout the 1960s and 70s have found evidence towards this theory in a lab setting, and have even found attraction ratings increased a little for people with similar personality traits for the same reason. We did touch on this similarity principle in a previous video on why individuals choose partners who tend to look similar to them. The second principle of attraction is reciprocity, which states that people like others who like them, or attraction breeds attraction. The concept dates all the way back to the 1950s, however several meta-analyses have uncovered that reciprocity doesn't hold over sexual attraction, but instead only holds 
as a general reciprocal friendliness. In other words, sexual, physical, carnal attraction cannot be negotiated. But friendliness, being friends with someone, platonic friendships can be influenced by reciprocity, which is why the quote-unquote nice guy trope exists. Because if your plan for attracting someone is through acts of service, then chances are it's going to be seen as a platonic attraction rather than a sexual attraction, which is what most of these types of men are after. The third and perhaps the most obvious principle of attraction is the concept of beauty, the main topic that we look at on the Coove's channel, whereby there's been a great deal of evidence that a partner's physical attractiveness is a reliable predictor of attraction in your initial encounter. As well as this, there is a pronounced sex difference or dimorphic difference in stated preferences of a partner's physical appearance with men placing greater value on beauty than do women. That being said, mind you that this finding comes from a questionnaire and so when push comes to shove and what people really want, it turns out that both men and women kind of prefer beauty almost equally. It is very important. This desire for beauty is obviously very heavily rooted in an evolutionary point of view as men and women have evolved to have different mate preferences in order to maximize their success in gene reproduction. For one, resources are more important, for the other, physical attractiveness is quite important. Now, while we discuss and unpack the principles of attraction, and I'm going to give you the whole spiel on what we're going to be doing, how about you take this moment to like and subscribe to the Coos channel, it really helps us out, and uh, this gives me a chance to take a breather while I'm doing my voiceover. The first principle of attraction is that of security, in which it is hypothesized that people should be most attracted to partners who are neither anxious or avoidant because they provide the best opportunities for forming close emotional bonds. In other words, be neurotypical. This theory is less relevant in the field of facial aesthetics as it's due to a more cognitive process of mate selection. However, it does highlight the importance of confidence in judgments of attraction, where confidence can be improved by being more comfortable with your facial aesthetic. So in that sense, looking attractive does have a more or less confounding effect on every facet of our cognitive decision making. To actualize this B dating study, 108 heterosexual American college students who are currently single were recruited to attend three sessions in order to obtain course credit, which is a great way of obtaining course credit. Lecturers, please take note. In the first session, the candidates were assessed for their political attitudes, their personal values, interests, general personality, effectivity, attachment, and self-esteem. After this, the actual speed dating was completed with individuals participating in multiple five minute long dates with potential romantic partners from the opposite sex. After the speed dating sessions, every participant responded to questions like, would you be interested in seeing this partner again after the speed date event? And these are similar to the concepts defined in the methodology primer that we mentioned closer to the beginning of the video. So with all of these procedures in mind, Let's see which of the attraction principles were deemed significant due to the results of this study. Da, 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 da. As it turns out, beauty was the strongest predictor of initial attraction, with physical attraction having a huge influence on the perceived overall attractiveness of an individual. This is hardly surprising for anybody who's watched this channel long enough, as virtually every research paper points to this being the most important thing in mate selection in one way or another. In the speed dating arena, it was found that the security principle did not significantly predict attractiveness. In other words, confidence being emotionally available was not enough to make for a meaningful connection. On a similar wavelength, it was also found that reciprocity was not as important in attraction and surprisingly, there was a striking lack of evidence for the attractiveness of similarity. To be fair, this is a speed dating event and you wouldn't really get a chance to show your reciprocity, do something nice for the other partner. Likewise, with similarity, it doesn't really matter how you're going to assess that. So it's unsurprising that beauty is the thing that won out because it's kind of like Tinder. You're swiping on people based on their very first initial impression, which are most often just your physical characteristics. So to sum everything up, it's been found through speed dating procedures in which participants have brief dates with a series of potential romantic partners which allow researchers to recognize the precursors to close relationships and study the initiators of romantic attraction. We find that beauty is unsurprisingly the most important thing for the formation of a relationship. 
Now, mind you, this isn't commentary on how successful a relationship will be, but if you want to have more relationships or get your foot in the door, then being attractive is unsurprisingly very important. One of the benefits of this type of speed dating study is that it's a field study which looks at some of the precursors for attraction and decision making based on actual realistic data. So if these studies are all indicating towards beauty being very important, then chances are in your day-to-day -day life, this is also going to be a very similar result if you're ever in a speed dating scenario. When looking at the specifics, characteristics of the self were better predictors of women's attraction compared to men, whereas partner characteristics were better predictors of men's attraction compared to women. After all of this consideration, it's divulged that the strongest predictor of attraction for both sexes was a partner's physical attractiveness, providing the scope of importance for this type of research in areas such as facial aesthetics, which is why curves exist, which directly look at the areas of physical anthropology to recognize what makes someone objectively attractive. So there you have it. You know that beauty is very important. You've probably known this in your day-to-day -day life, and so I recommend that you get the Coov's Aesthetic Report, which does assess your facial aesthetic and tries to give you feedback on how you can improve. And it's written by our team of doctors and dentists who do the assessment. They're very skilled at what they do. And you see how much scientific rigor we put into our videos in terms of research and quality. And our reports are just as, if not more rigorous, in terms of the objectiveness in the type of assessments that we do. If you're looking for some professional direction on how you can improve, then really this is the best starting point that you can get.